Okay, this should, if the epic music is finished, this should be episode three of By the Numbers League of Legends edition. Sponsored by Alpha Draft. Something, something, an Alpha Draft tagline. I, I don't know what they are. I don't, I don't get notes for these things, guys. I'm, I'm working <laughs> on the seat of my pants. So I think we're going to start this show like we did the last show. Because remember, remember what I, I set forward, guys? I said, like, basically, if Monty wins, we will continue the segment in which he brags at the beginning of, like, yeah, I won doing this, and, uh, like, this is my strategy, guys. Like, I'm an expert. <laughs> if he doesn't win, then we won't ever speak of that subject again. So I assume by the fact that I've been told we have, like, screenshots and stuff, that <laughs> continue. So we'll go over to Monty's Braggart Corner. I think that's going to be my name. Okay? <laughs> Find out what did you do correctly this month? Well, Why are you well, smart and everyone else well, in my co- in these contests? In my Braggart Corner, actually, uh, day one, day two of Korea, I like just broke even. And this day, I had four five dollar entries, and I won about thirty. So it's like up up ten uh, on days three and four. So I did okay this week, not as well as last week, but basically, my strategy. Uh, this past week on days three and four was so CJ Entis, I knew or I thought was very likely to go to three games against the Koo Tigers. So I, I tried to build a r- it doesn't matter who you think they're playing. It will be three games every time. <laughs> CJ I know plays. it's like Samsung, too. That's that's the dream. The CJ and Samsung the dream that you can get three games every time. So I went with Coco and Space. Obviously, they're the carries. They're going to get most of the kills. Mad Life was lower cost. So I, I threw him in there as well. And yeah. then to round out, I picked Jin Air because I was pretty sure that uh, it was just going to be a stomp o- over Spenu so that they would get lots of points just crushing their opponents. And then uh, out of the Jin Air guys, I really wanted Chaser. Like that's the guy you really want on Jin Air because Chaser and, and their AD carry usually, Pilot or Captain Jack. So Chaser, their jungler, currently has an over 90% kill contribution. He's the number one player in terms of kill contribution in Korea. So you really want him because he's going to get a lot of points just due to his kills. I mean, he nearly got as many points as Space, even though he's a I mean, jungler. He had assists, so that'll help. Yeah. yeah, but he only played two games. So that's that's super good. So Chaser is just a really nice pickup. And then I got uh, Trace as well just because I needed a top laner and I w- that was the match I was most confident was going to win. So usually I try and like get some really good carries in the three game series and then I try and just pick a couple players from a set that's going to be a blowout. And then I again got Fury from Samsung because you, he always gets points. Do you usually start with your best players? Is that how you always do it? Um, I usually, it depends. <laughs> like usually if I say Fury, I just take him because the thing about Fury is that he was like, first off, Samsung has gone to three games against SK Telecom, now Koo Tigers and Jin Air. So it's like every set they go to three games because they at least have one really good game. But he was something like 8-2-2 two, and two on Lucian, um, even in a game that they lost. So he, he has really good games even when his team doesn't do well. And he's usually, I think he was only 6,500 last week for an AD carry. So he was very cheap. So at the moment, your main strategy in LCK is bet on Jin Air, CJ, and Samsung. Is that <laughs> it's, it? It's pretty sick. Going hard at uh, that one, though. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a it's pretty good strategy. Not necessarily Jin Air, just Chaser. All just right. Chaser. Okay. Chaser the rest really of them, good. it's depending on matchup. Yeah, Jin Air, it's a little bit matchup dependent too. Again, I picked Jin Air because they were, I figured they were going to get a million points against Spenu. Okay, do we have another graphic? No, that's that's it for me. Oh, that, oh that's it, right? Sh- short week this time, guys. Short week, yeah. Not, not a lot, not too many winnings going on. You know, a few gold coins came back in, but listen, like, like all gamblers, you don't, you don't mention the losses, guys. They, those didn't happen. So next week, <laughs> let's see if it's a longer segment. You know, if, if it gets to like five minutes, then then the bragging is real. But for now, just a little bit of bragging, just a teaser. All right, let's go into this week's stuff then. So let's start as ever in LCS. So I think it's better to go in that order. So what about you? What about your last week, Thorin? I made some money betting on LPL, where <laughs> my approach in LPL 
See, I, here's the thing. In LPL Monty, you can disobey all the rules that we've given about betting so far. Like, look for the shit show, like bet on the players who are consistent and stuff. In LPL, what you do is there are only stomps. So you just pick someone who in one out of two games is very likely to stomp because but you, you just got a really good chance of that. And also the good thing is because there's a billion players in LPL, it actually makes the picking this, making the salary, I assume for Alpha Draft, like an absolute nightmare. So you can always get a few where it's like, this guy's got a pretty good chance this week. So that, that's that's my approach at the moment. So over in Europe, actually, you know what? Of all the, I've been trying all the regions. Europe's actually the hardest one. It's so hard. It. Holy I find shit. it really hard. Because, because Especially this the problem, week, too. Here's the thing, Monty. Even though it's, okay, it's possible to, like, guessing the game that's likely to be scrappy, that's not the hard part. But it's, the, it's picking the one that's the lock to win. Because at the moment, the only person who's a lock to win was actually Fnatic. Like, even Origins kind of surprised some people. So the only one who definitely has won all the time is, is Fnatic. But their players are the most expensive also. So it's not like you can just use them to round out a pick. You're going to have to start with Fnatic. So then, yeah, it makes it really difficult. Because there's been some games. I'll, I'll give you an example. On last week's, I actually had some Elements players because I thought it's Elements versus Giants. If they're a half-decent team, this should be a good lock. And then obviously Giants won that game. So that, that was great there. Turned out that wasn't such a lock actually. Okay, the, the, other problem, the other problem with Europe is that the games have been like all stomps. Even if a team gets a billion fantasy points, it's very hard to predict which team is going to win uh, in the in the close games or the shit shows, right? Yep. So I I am scared. And I'm especially scared of this week. Because if we we'll go, we'll go through the games now, but there's a lot of games here that could create a huge number of fantasy points, but I have no idea who's going to win. Well, to give you an example, Monty, you would have remember the one that we had guaranteed pinned on the board to be a shit show was Unicorns of Love Copenhagen Wolves. Instead, no, Unicorns of Love convincingly won the game, and Copenhagen Wolves got barely any kills. All that was supposed to be the game where you were guaranteed even in the loser to get some points. But we'll see if that's a one-off or if that actually continues. At the moment, Europe's been a lot of stumps the last week or so. It, it, the, the, since the season started, it's been almost entirely stumps. I think the only game that's really been remotely close has been SK versus Fnatic. So, okay, on day one in Europe, okay, here's one for you, Monty. Origin plays Unicorns of Love. Could that be fun? <laughs> um, it could be. Uh, one thing to remember is that uh, Niles, or Niles, however you say his name, uh, he actually has, like, the highest average point total of any player so far this season, um, both it, it, because he hasn't lost a game, it's just he's he's been scoring about 45 points a game on average. So even though he's really expensive, it may be worth it to go for him as an AD carry just because of the sheer number of points that he's able to get you. Now, who do you actually think is going to win that game? Who would, who would your money be on? Origin? I would think Origin. So the problem is that Origins players are all very expensive uh, because they've been so successful so far this season and they've scored a lot of points. Um, out of the Origin players, though... Which ones do you think can justify the price? So you had Niels because obviously statistically he's had Niels some is, games. Yeah, Niels is number one and he, he just picks up a lot of kills. Um, Amazing is actually very high up on the point total, too. He's, what sixth overall as a jungler which is pretty good but also for 8800 you may be able to get something a little bit better out of it if you think airwax is going to win in the copenhagen wolves versus gambit game then he actually win winning airwalk or airwax has a uh a, he's actually number four overall in terms of points when he's winning a game you know we now Just live because, in a world monty where the cheapest junglers uh, Diamond Prox and Sven Skerin. That's the yeah. world of the EU right now. This is the darkest I, timeline. I also wouldn't pick Sven Skerin or Diamond because I don't think they're going to win this week. Okay. So here's an interesting one. Rockat versus Giants. Now at the moment, yes. Giants is okay. tearing it up on T. Let's 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 uh let's go back. The, why this is so hard to pick matches in Europe this week? is that I have no idea who's going to win a lot of these games. Like, this scares me. Origin versus UOL could be close. Rocket versus Giants, no clue who's winning that one. 
SK versus H two K. One completely. No, 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 not necessarily. I think that this week my strategy is just going to be balancing my picks across multiple shit shows. Like I don't want to pick too hard into one of these matchups because there's too many. There's too. It's too volatile. You know what I mean? Rocket versus Giants. I don't know which way Zach it's going to go. H two K versus SK. Pretty sure it's going to go to H two K, but not entirely sure. Fanatic should win. And then CW versus Gambit is another one that I have no idea. Picky well, on day one is risky. Shouldn't CW Gambit be the shit show? I mean, Rocket versus Giants could be too, though. Yeah, Who knows? Quite, Origin, th- Origin that- versus UOL could be too, because Origin keeps... Get, uh, they don't close very well. They get a million kills in their games. The problem I see with betting on the... Giants one though is that Giants a lot of their players are quite expensive now because of their pretty sick run so yeah you, you, they're like top two or three in all the categories pretty much right and the the Giants AD carry has been he's actually number two in terms of points when he's winning overall so he's quite expensive like believe it or not since there's actually, since this isn't a necessarily a terrible matchup for Gambit, if you want to bet on Gambit, this is probably the time to do it because their, their players are nearly all bottom of the categories. So this is when you can literally get forgiven for the cheapest in the whole league. Uh, also, the I would Freeze and Soren I think are both pretty low compared to what their performance is like to be likely to be versus Gambit. I think Gambit's going to lose to Copenhagen Wolves, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and pick Soren and Freeze. And try and build a roster around them. I mean, I tried to get Niles in there just to balance it out. uh, Just to to have that strong performer. And then in terms of the team that I was thinking about making, I wanted to go with Oduamne. Because he actually is not too expensive. And he tends to have pretty decent... He's like a pretty average pretty average top laner. Yeah. But, you but think he's not too expensive. Well. And I think H2K is going to win. Um, I think Yankos is a pretty good deal this week because Yankos actually has... He's been doing really well even when he loses. No, his stat lines even in losses have been good as well. That's true. Yeah, he's been really good even in his losses and he's still averaging... The difference between his points when he wins... When he, when he wins, he gets... He averages 28.37 points. When he loses, he averages 28.28 points. So he's super consistent in terms of point value. And then I went with Soren and Freeze. This is kind of my my gamble as to is is Gambit going to win or is uh, is CW going to win? And then I took Niels and I had to fill it out with somebody, so I had to take Promise Q as my support. But I don't think that's going to be too big of a hit yeah the thing is in just in terms of looking at the salaries this is one of those weeks where yes gambit has at uh, giants rather has won all these games but it's really hard to actually bet on giants players in fact actually i think them winning makes it not a good idea to bet on them because who, who can be certain they'll win and then on top of that if they lose how do you know any of these players are going to get you points yeah. so i think a lot you- of them are a gamble to do because they're I getting up to the point where you can literally just pick fanatic players instead almost <laughs> Yeah, and I think you're right. You pick around uh, Gambit. You pick around the Gambit Copenhagen Wolves game on day one, because both Cause teams a, are reasonable. There's going to be a lot of value there, and you can you can go with you can fill out with players that are super consistent, like we talked about. Niels is super consistent. Yankos is super consistent. Um, these are like really good picks because they don't have a lot of variance, and in terms of their wins versus their losses, or Niels hasn't lost yet, so we actually don't know what a losing KDA looks like for him, and therefore a losing um, fantasy point total. So that's that's kind of where I'm I'm leaning this week, and then maybe you go for you try and fill it out with like Forgiven and Cabochard if you can, and see if they can beat the Wolves. Especially since that you're literally taking those players now as like your l- cheapest players. So that's not a, when you're getting down to the, that's the thing when you're building the fantasy thing and you pick like the locks, like you, you put your certain, these are going to give you points at the end. Like you were saying with promise Q there, it's very unlikely you're going to get a good player that you know, you're going to get points. So you have to gamble on the last one or two usually. Yeah, anyway. but it's like supports usually don't get a lot of points anyway. So 
Well, it's pretty ideal then. You can get forgiven almost the cheapest player. <laughs> Uh, I th- if Gambit has a good performance, I think you could get insane value out of that pick. So day two, Fnatic Giants. Are you scared about that, Monty? Does the fear that Fnatic won't win, does it exist? Is it real? No, I think Fnatic will win. I, I don't believe in Giants, dude. One thing, one thing about Giants, though, is they're great for points. I mean, their AD carry and mid laner are both really, really high up there in terms of fantasy points. So if you can snag them and you think they're going to do well... Which is why maybe filling that's filling out with Giants carries is also not a terrible idea. I mean, for all you guys out there, there's always some that rise up, Monty, who are like, listen, I always believed in Giants. You know, you guys always trash talked him. I've I've always said Giants were good. Okay, well, guys, we're on a fantasy betting site now. Just put just put in some money. <laughs> and all I've said is, listen, I'll see you on like week ten. Keep betting those <laughs> Gambit's play, Giants players hard though. You got to go hard. Remember, Pepinero is, is really good, right, guys? Every right. week, build your team around him. And then at the end, we'll show our points totals. I'll go head to head with any of you guys. <laughs> That's right. Put all your ducats on Giants. Exactly. So uh, the other thing I wanted to say about the Rocket versus Giants match is that just uh, before we go into day two, is that Nuke Duck only has a salary of eight thousand as a mid laner, which is you know it's up there, but Nuke Duck also when he wins. He's number five in Europe in terms of creating fantasy points, number five overall. So if you think Rockat's going to beat Giants, he's a really good pickup. And That's uh, also just like a form thing as well. Like it, The problem he had in the past was he wasn't a very good fantasy producer in the past. Even in wins, he could have a low score. Whereas actually now he's getting so that like it's more of a snowball start, especially some of these picks he's doing. I mean, he's literally just doing whatever Faker does, basically. <laughs> like He just wants it it's like, yeah, and that's what I like, Monty. That tells me the old nucleus come back. He's like, that faker guy can do it. It's obviously just a champion, isn't it? So I'll pick that champion. Like, oh, okay, this is this is the guy I've been waiting for, Monty. Not the guy who picks, like, <laughs> control mages and attempts to play a safe game. <laughs> this is for fantasy. That's what you want. Yeah. You want someone to go super hard. The big on snowball. The he even did well in that, even when, he, even when they lost. So... Right, so first game on day two is Fnatic Giants. Would you still bet on Fnatic players? Is that is that a risky game? I think. I mean, I don't think it's that risky. I'd still pick Fnatic players, but again, they're they're pretty expensive, and yeah, they're pretty expensive. Okay, Rock Up versus Origin. Again, if you can fit Niels into your lineup, he's an amazing fantasy point producer, and he's been very reliable since Origins won all their games and is likely to win versus Rockat as well. So you really want to to look towards uh, to look towards Niels here. He's just he's just been number one over the past few weeks. So how can you ignore that? If you think Giants are going to win, then pick up the AD carry there because he's been number two when the Giants win. But I just don't. I think the Giants are going out too this week. So. Do you think Elements versus Copenhagen Wolves? Or I mean, should... no. I they're playing they're playing Rockets, so they should go one and one. Excuse me. Okay. Sorry. What was your question? Is Elements Copenhagen Wolves a good game to bet both sides of? I I think you you can definitely pick on both sides of that matchup and maybe do quite well. The problem with the Elements players is that there's not a lot of data. For who does well on that roster, uh, Tabs is the highest up at about thirty point eight points when he's winning. Yeah. So you probably should prioritize Tabs here if you want to pick some elements players if you think they're going to do well. But Tabs is also pretty expensive for not that great a performance. So but there's also some reasonably cheap players out here. Yeah, and obviously Gambit versus SK, you could find some value there, particularly in a, a pick like Candy Panda. So you think SK should win this matchup? The two underperforming I think teams? SK, yeah, I think SK should win this matchup. But again, you can pick... I think that I'm going to pick around both uh, Gambit and SK this week because I think that that's... Mm, there's different strategies you could do. Elements versus CW. This is a hard day to know what to do. Thing is, if you think SK is going to win, like I said before, Svenskeren is literally the cheapest jungler on that day. Yeah. That's not a bad and, gamble to take. That could be a huge point getter. 
Yeah, exactly. Svenskeren on a good day, we know that he can really get a lot of kills if he's on his game, especially if he picks something like Lee Sen. I think that's a pretty reasonable one. Yeah, I just don't know whether I, w I would pick around Elements versus Copenhagen Wolves or Gambit versus SK or both. I think probably a combo you, you, of both. I you think, don't want to I think expensive players in those lines. I think I think what I would do is I would try because there actually aren't that many expensive players on either of those lineups. Uh, Freeze is actually pretty expensive. So he's, he's the only carries. One. I would I would try and pick like do one of those things where you pick elements gambit elements SK Copenhagen Wolves gambit Copenhagen Wolves SK. Try and make a lineup around all of those and stuff as many players and then hope that those games are. Like big shit shows. The one last game then is Unicorns of Love H2K. Yeah. So here's the problem. That's Pre predicting that game should be easy, but it, it isn't, Monty. That's 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 Europe right there. The fact that this is so debatable is why Europe is a dark place right now. <laughs> it is it is pretty dark. I'm not gonna lie. But okay, it's let's just bad. look at the salaries for some of the players for that though. Okay, so I mean, okay, so cheap. Ryu is 7,000, which is the tied for second from bottom mid laner. That's not, that's not a terrible pickup necessarily if you think H2K is going to win that. Yeah, Ryu hasn't been putting up amazing points, though. It, when he wins, it's still only about 28 a game. Um, Hjarnin is pretty far up there at nearly 33 points. So Hjarnin is actually pretty good value this week if H2K wins. He's going to be... Really nice to have. Yeah, and the other problem is, what, this is one of the actual issues, is that when Unicorns of Love win, Power of Evil doesn't actually necessarily get that crazy stat lines. No, Vardags is the one who gets the crazy stat lines. I mean, and in the in game, fact, you look and you're like, this guy's the best, but actually I've seen even in wins, he doesn't necessarily like, he doesn't have to have those 14, 1, and 5 type score lines. If Unicorns of Love wins, Vardags is going to be crazy good value this week because he's at 7,000 as a salary, but he makes nearly 37 points when Unicorns of Love wins. He's like top eight. So if Yoel wins this, Vardags has a very good chance of just going nuts, especially since he's the second cheapest AD carry on day two. That's actually a really good value pick. Okay, at the moment... The thing about Vardags is he has a pretty big swing. When he loses, he only gets about 25 points. So... At, at the moment, obviously... I mean, I don't know how you're doing it. At the moment, I'm betting on every league just to kind of get a, a test for... So I can... It's more memorable if you were right or wrong. You, if you can keep track of those things. But if you had to choose, are you, are you in general staying away from some of the EU matchups? Especially this week. It's, I feel it's really volatile this week. It's been really volatile overall. Like I said, my problem with EU is that every game has been a stomp. And it's been not very predictable as to who's going to be stomping. Like, who the fuck knew that Giants was going to be doing this well early in the season? Just everyone so. on Reddit, apparently. But aside from them, <laughs> aside from those psychics that appear out of nowhere, <laughs> much like the White Walkers, they appear for like 10 minutes and then they disappear again. You don't hear from them for thousands of years, actually, won't you? <laughs> Until their time comes again. <laughs> So speaking of, of leagues which are hard to predict, and there's a lot of teams that, you know, who, who even knows who's going to win? Let's go over to NA at LCS, though, Monty, <laughs> where it is an absolute oh wilderness. So over in the NA LCS, man, we have some fucking games for you on day one here. <laughs> so, so game one, enemy team eight. Now, I'm sure in terms of salary, that if you want to do a shit show bet, this must be an all right one, right? Should this be close? Hold what are you on, thinking? Pull it up. Enemy team eight. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm pulling up my spreadsheets. Um, yeah, that could definitely be terrible. Uh, remember that team eight tends to play around their uh, their top laner though, so he's about in the middle in terms of salary. Yeah, he, yeah, about the middle. Um, ooh, man, Flair. body drops stats are really bad this season. Flair's Cali Trolls is quite high this season. 
Kelly Trolls' stats. This, yeah. Kelly Trolls' stats are actually not great. For this week, by the way, Monty, I take it all back. For this week, Inox is the most expensive mid. I don't know if I would gamble on that myself. Because you can't even be sure necessarily to win this game. The problem with Team 8 is like almost all of their players are in the bottom are in the bottom tier of points, even when they're winning, like in the bottom 10. They've been doing really bad, win or lose. Yikes. I don't know about this. Maple Street is the only one who's even remotely relevant. And it should be Nien playing this week, not him. Wow. Okay. I mean, teammate, I they're just their point totals have been such crap even when they win that I don't think it justifies their salaries like at all. So stay away from that one, maybe. Especially since I, the match itself could be a gamble. Yeah, the match itself could be definitely a gamble. Now here's <clears> the thing, Monty. Here's where you have to really give me some analysis. Because we should now be like teammate Dignitas, ha ha ha, obvious stomp, that would be too easy. But apparently, again, we, we live in a different world now, Monty. Could the, do you th are you certain TSM will win this game? Well, here's the thing. Dignitas is so cheap. They are so cheap this week. I mean, look at Core JJ, cheapest AD carry, shifter, cheapest mid. You could get some crazy a good value one. out of these picks. The thing is, if you I pick think, them, I think you top, take, you're probably going to win the whole take a, competition. I think you, yeah, I think you take a risk on that, maybe, <laughs> because... When Core JJ is winning, he scores nearly 37 points a game, which puts him in the top eight players. Oh, he's actually number nine in terms of points while winning. But he's so cheap. He's just incredibly cheap. And Shifter is pretty high up there, too. But especially Core. If Dignitas wins, you could go, you could go big on this one. Now, one thing to remember about the enemy Team 8 game is that if we look at Inox, so Inox is actually number one in terms of salary this week, and you might be like, what the fuck? Inox and Otter are so expensive. But Otter has been at, both Otter and Inox are number one and number two in terms of points while winning, where they get 45 points a game, over 45 points a game, which is why they're so expensive. The problem is when they lose, they get under 20. So if you think enemy is going to beat teammate in the first one of this week, that's the reason why these guys are so pricey. So you may want to pick up Otter or Inox because they do score a hell of a lot of points while they're winning. But it has to be when you, you think enemy is going to win. It can't be just the shit show bet. Yeah. Yes, because otherwise they've done quite poorly. Okay, so... However, however, I think the biggest value pick this week, Thorin, is double lift. Because his salary is only 7800 which is rather low for an AD carry, even though they may be playing a tight match with gravity. But the thing about double lift is when double lift is winning, he's been scoring about 43 points. But when he's losing, he's been scoring about 35. And the thing to remember about double lift is even last season, so it's not even just this season, but last season, double lift has a very low point spread. He's super consistent. He almost always scores the same number of points approximately, whether he wins or loses. So it's only 43. So far on a bad game for double lift, he's been averaging 35 on a game where he loses. Yet when he wins, it's 43. So the fact that he's only 7,800, I would put him on every roster this week. That's what so I would he, do. I would just the, he's I the best flex, insurance player. I would flex the shit out of double lift this week. Yeah, in fact... On the, on the stat sheet here, the problem is that the only other people who have numbers comparable in wins and losses are like people who haven't lost or who've lost one game. So almost doesn't even feel fair to compare them. Well, Double Lift has only lost one game. All right, let's have a look. So Liquid versus C9. Would you, would you hazard to guess that Liquid should win? I would guess, given C9's current performance, that Liquid will win. And that means Piglet is going to be the biggest... Actually, Quas is going to be the biggest point getter. Quas is uh, number four overall in terms of points while winning. He's the most if, expensive top this week, though. Or this day, he is, Yeah, he is the most expensive top. Uh, also, the problem is... Could be is worth it, though. He's playing Balls. Balls does yeah. seem to be having his issues right now. 
Yes, he does. And pretty much all the top laners are are relatively expensive. So, I don't know. There's also Impact to consider in the TIP versus TDK, a game that Impact should win, and a game that when when Impulse wins, Impact tends to get pretty nice score lines. But it's still pretty expensive for the value. I would say the value for Quas, the expected value for Quas is higher than Impact and probably more than the 400. I think Impact's a little overpriced this week actually. What do you think of I Will Dominate? Because actually Dominate's numbers in losses aren't that bad when you consider if he wins, it's about 34 points. And it doesn't go down that much even loss. Yeah, when he loses, it's 27. So he's he's been very Pretty consistent. Good gamble, especially but again, he's, he's so expensive. That's my problem with him. Is that okay. this game is is likely for TL to win, but it's also very pricey. And I actually still wouldn't pick Cloud9, even if you think they're going to upset. Because again, Cloud9 doesn't have good stats even when they win. Like, they have very low numbers when they win. Incarnation is the highest. He's about 34. So maybe you, you take Incarnation. Oh, it's actually Sneaky has 36. It's not bad. It's not bad. So the stomp on day one is surely tip versus TDK, especially in light of the substitute situation and all that palaver. Yeah. And this is just where you're going to be taking any tip players that make sense monetarily, basically. Yeah, Apollo is very high in terms of his statistics uh, when, when he's winning, but that's why he's so expensive this week. Zhao Wei Zhao um, versus Bishu could be a little, little stomp there, Monty. He is expensive, though. Yeah, he's not too bad considering that he picks up so many points while winning, about 35. So he could be he could be some good value there. He could be some good value there. Just in terms of the top five players that you that get points while winning, right now it's Otter, Inox, Double Lift, Quas, and Zion Spartan. So that's Zion Spartan. I mean, I actually think that the CLG players, the two big points in terms of CLG players, are massively over underpriced. Zion and Doublelift are so cheap this week. So you know what I would do, Thorin, is I would try and get these two players because they have very low differentials. They always seem to do well, win or loss. Um, and especially while we don't have a big data set from this season. Uh, from at least double lift last season was for the entire season exactly the same way. He's super consistent. So I'd, I'd just try and build teams around double lift and then take picks like maybe the enemy picks that uh, if Otter or if you could slam Otter or Inox in there because I think enemy should beat teammate. The only, th the only thing is, like I noticed he... I would even if you're like a TDK fan. I mean, I wouldn't bet on them at the moment anyway. But I noticed that they have both sets of people listed, so I'm not certain if anyone truly knows yet who's actually going to be playing for them. Because from what I heard, I think the visa thing's still delayed. So I, d I listen. It's my inside knowledge. I, think I don't. It is too. I, I wouldn't bet on the original players like Ninja and Emperor to be there. So I wouldn't waste your time if I were you. You might end up. I'm in pretty, a, a horrible I'm pretty sure Ninja and Emperor are still in Korea. So. And even if you think they're going to win, why risk it when you're not even sure if they'll be in the continent at the time to yeah. play the game? I'd just stay clear of that one, guys. <laughs> yeah, I think I think what I'm going to do in NA this week is just see if I can take um, Double Lift and Zion and then see if I can flesh out a pretty decent roster around that while trying to get... Oh, man, it's so hard because these enemy picks are expensive. Honestly, I may just go for TSM, TSM picks to fill it out. Even though TSM hasn't been the biggest point earners this season, I mean, obviously they've been doing well, but their fantasy points because they've been playing a lot more of an objective-based game uh, this season. So they haven't really the TSM wins games. If we remember, like the CLG versus TSM game, they just do it by taking objectives. Now they they don't get a lot of kills. Even Bjergsen is not as high as you would think. Still doing well. Bjergsen's a, a, a solid pick because in wins, he's at like 37 points. And in losses, he's at 32 points. So he's a pretty safe one. Yeah, yeah. For me, Bjergsen's like, the in terms of just the safety of the pick, like an NA Reckless. It's always going to be expensive, but it's also not... You've also got a pretty good chance you're going to get something back for that every time. Right. Every time. That's true. Uh, you know who's really... Been a bad pick is Wild Turtle. 
he's not he's only putting up 27 points in wins. So I think he's actually pretty overpriced this week. As well, to be fair, if you're an Eddie Carry Monkey, you have to get to a lot of late game team fights to get all those points. So <laughs> in an ideal world for TSM, they don't need Wild Turtle to do well. They've actually figured it out, Monty. They cracked the code. <laughs> they finally they've got the formula right, I think, at last. Yeah. There are just it. a lot of other AD carries that have been doing better. I mean, even Santorin gets more points than Wild Turtle. It's not a good sign. Santorin, the jungler who never ganks. So, okay, you've said that the CLG players have value just because if you look at even when they're losing, etc. Is there anyone on Gravity? Because obviously Gravity's been doing very well. Is there anyone on Gravity who's standing out relative to salary? Let's see. Relative to salary. Um, I mean... So Keen is right in the middle. The, Let's have a look what he's got. The Gravity players actually haven't been getting that, that many points overall. All yeah, tech, I believe... Keen's numbers are not particularly spectacular, bearing in mind all of them. All these wins. Uh, Bunny Fufu actually gets. Okay, before an act of God attempted to stop you (laughs) talking about the travesty of Bunny winning all these games. Yes, you're telling me. Okay, Bunny Fufu has the best stats at the moment. So, so here's the crazy thing about gravity that's happening right now, is that. It looks like all of their players, when they're winning, have less points than their average per game, which includes their losses, their one loss. So actually their loss is dragging their point values upward. And all of the gravity players in terms of fantasy points are in the bottom like one third of players overall. The highest player is Hauntser, who gets about 27 points during a win. So... Gravity kind of sucks for fantasy points. It's like and I also how, how high the team goes, something's always pulling them down. And then when they're, when they're down at the bottom, Monty, that's when it's, the, the effect is its strongest, I believe. Yeah, I, I think that's how it works. We've learned a lot about well, gravity. And then all Would you gamble is, on any of these players, though, in terms of just no, in terms of the salary or any decent? No, all tech, I just based on the statistics so far, all tech has been getting 27 points in a win. And he's 8,700. He's the third most expensive AD carry. Double lift has averaged more points, if, even if you include his losses. So I think, I don't know. And I also don't think gravity is going to win this game. So I would, I would rather take players like Zion and, and double lift personally, just because they've been putting up more fantasy points. I think it's a safer pick. Okay. On day two, I, mean, I even yeah. Aframu, Aframu and Poe Belter are also really good because we know Poe Belter is going to be playing. Poe Belter is sixth overall. He gets 40 points in a win. Like you, CLG could be really good value this week if they beat Gravity because the, CLG has been putting up points. And Poe Belter is not that expensive. He's, he's in the middle of the road in terms of price. So is he like a flex pick for you? No, nah, I just pick him as my mid. Fuck it. <laughs> okay. So... Teammate plays C nine. Would you would you avoid this? Like, what are the? Do you think actually teammate has a chance to upset here? Uh, TL plays C nine. Um, on on day two. Oh, on day two. Sorry. First game uh, of day C nine TA. Let me pull up. Uh this could be this could be a good one. Because I have to figure well. if you want if you want to bet on the upset here, you, there's got to be some teammate players that are going to be cheap. Yeah. There are. And as far as as far as teammate goes, again, you may want to look at the AD carry role as the most value should be Nien. And Nien's pretty cheap. Seven thousand. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty cheap. The thing is, do you bet do you do you think that Dignitas versus Gravity could be a Dignitas win? <laughs> Guys, I that, can't that find the some... end on the stat sheet. Do you have him? Uh, no, I don't. Hmm, I wonder what his stats are then. Oh, well. You could have been averaged in with uh, Maple, Maple Street, actually. That could be it, yeah. Who else on teammates potentially worth it? Cali Trolls is the one you said before? Nah, Cali Trolls hasn't been doing great this season, honestly. Even when he wins, he hasn't been putting up too many points. I think that, but he's cheap. 
He's, he's really cheap. cheap. But yeah, his stats aren't very good at the moment, unfortunately. I also think C9 is going to win this. And Incarnation and Sneaky. Oh, Incarnation wow, is very cheap. Oh, no. Incarnation. Incarnation for this one. See, for no, this 7, one, 800, 7,800 is still pretty good. If on day one, he was really cheap. This is liquid, but you can tell this is see this is computers. Skynet is telling you guys that incarnation is going to do way better this time because the Skynet house doesn't want to lose, so it's put his value really up. Either that, or it's just baiting you fools into like finally this will be incarnation's go. Oh god, he's failed me again. Why? Why? Please hide. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see on that one. Also okay. sneaky. It's more expensive, even though he's the the most likely one. I don't know. I don't think I'd pick around this match. Monty, do you like stomps? I thought you liked stomps. So TSM <laughs> plays TDK. That is a, that is a 100% lock stomp, right? Yeah. And Surely, again, especially with subs. Yes. Bjergsen should be a very good pickup right there. Bjergsen and Santorin are the biggest point pinatas on and the Bjergsen TSM. Isn't even, isn't even the most expensive bid for that day. So I think that's yeah, a pretty, pretty solid value. pick right there, guys. Bjergsen's really good value. And if, like me, he, you like you to just play. hope You just hope that he doesn't kill TDK too quickly. If, like me, you like to gamble, Wild Turtle's right in the middle of the pack there. Hey, listen, Monty, <laughs> on this show, remember, I love Wild Turtle. I bet on him all the time, right? I don't, no. I, I'm, I'm waiting for those stomp games. Why, Wild oh. Turtle is so low in terms of points. It's gonna, he's, it's gonna below, turn he's below all tech. And... Gravity, we just discussed how they're really at the bottom of the standings in terms of points. I think you could do a lot better with with a different AD carry this week. So, tip versus I mean, liquid even, is obviously even one of the when hardest. Piglet, even when Piglet loses, Piglet is cheaper. And if you include Piglet's losses, all of his games, Piglet averages more points per game. Okay. But that's the problem. Liquid plays tip, which in theory yeah. should be the most competitive game. Who do you actually think should win the game? Do you have a sense right now? I don't know. I really don't know. I think that I, I'm scared of impulse, Thorin, because when they win, they get about a, they get a million points and they get a million kills. But when they lose, they tend to lose really hard. Like what we saw them just get absolutely destroyed by CLG. So I, I am afraid because they haven't had a lot of consistency. Well, to me, that, that, that team is just like, I just look at Xiao Wei Xiao and I try to figure out, will he win? Because if he, if he goes well, they go crazy. And if he does badly, they don't exist, basically. He, he can just be a total non-factor in the whole game. The real value pick here, I think, is Piglet. Because he's pretty cheap this week. And if you think TL is going to win, Piglet does put up some really good numbers. He puts up nearly 40 points when he's winning. So Quas, again, Quas and Piglet are going to be pretty good values if TL wins. So now I've got, here's like a potential shit show for you, Monty. Digging Task versus Gravity. That, that should is. be good, right? And that, that's got to have some bargains in. I mean, oh, those, Dignitas. Uh, again, again, Core JJ. Could be a crazy bargain. Core JJ could be a crazy, crazy bargain. That's the thing. If Dignitas has these breakout games, as far as points go, when Dignitas wins, Core JJ does very well. Shifter does pretty well. Uh, Kiwi Kid actually surprisingly does pretty well. So considering the, the cheap quality of these picks... And because Gravity's points... Again, Gravity is just not doing well in fantasy points. I would not pick them. No, Kiwi Kid, relatively cheap. Fifth from the for, for putting up 30 plus points and wins as a support. Yeah, he's doing all right. So if there's a Dignitas upset, there could be some really good points here, particularly Core. Core is like really good value if they win. The last game of this week, CLG NME. That should, that should be a stop for CLG. I would Just think that would be pretty one sided. The problem is, is that. All of the CLG players are the most expensive at their role this week. So, or this day. So on day one, you know how we were we were talking about some of the value that Doublelift was having and Zion yep. Spartan was having? Well, day two, the value just isn't there. Now, again, if you think 
that enemy is going to beat CLG, there could be some crazy value here from from enemy. Well, Remember, look at Otter's win, value, and he has forty five win, point the wins. <laughs> yeah, win winning. Otter and Inox are the number one and number two fantasy players at over forty five points each. So considering that Otter has a sixty eight hundred salary and Inox has a sixty nine hundred salary, if enemy wins, these picks are likely to really produce. I think those so, are the ones where those are a good gamble if you got to fill out towards the I bottom. think so too. I think so too. I think maybe you pick a roster uh, with a couple of these enemy players in it if you can and just see because that, that could be the big, big upset victory for you in fantasy as well as for enemy in the LCS because again, Inox and Otter, they've been producing. Now when they lose, they lose really hard. So it's a risk. Okay, let's go over to China, uh, Korea now, rather. See, because oh boy. when I think of China, Monchi, I think of great Korean players. So that's why I associate <laughs> the two in my mind there. So, okay. <laughs> over in Champions, I mean, we touched on a little bit of this, obviously, at the beginning. But there are three obvious teams at the moment who it feels like if you get the right carries from them, it's hard to not get points. So True. the matchups are... First of all, we're starting out with Svenu versus Najin. Now, in a normal world, you should be like, well, Najin's far too good, but Najin's been fairly lackluster. Yeah. Is this even worth betting on any of these? Like, are, are there any cheap Svenu players who'd be like a good gamble, like a, a steal? Okay. Here's the weird thing about day one and two. Svenu plays two best of threes. <laughs> so just because of the fact that they're guaranteed four games... And they may have five or six, depending on how they do, because especially IM versus Spenu could be a giant shit show. Right? They're the, probably the two worst teams and champions. Well, I don't know. Probably it's actually Spenu and Anarchy. But uh, that's a pretty you know good matchup I mean? for bad teams. Uh, IM versus Spenu. All their players are super cheap. That could definitely go to three games. And Spenu, on top of that, has two other games. The problem is is that Spenu's players are terrible at putting up fantasy points. The only one, I mean, even Nuclear, their AD carry, has been putting up 24 points in a win. But they have a lot of games. <laughs> so I'm going to put probably a few Spenu players in my roster just because of the number of games that they have and the value of their picks. Nuclear is only 6,400 as an AD carry, yet he's playing two best of threes. So I think there's value in the Spenu AD carry this week just because of the number of Spenu games. Now, in I'd terms stay of, away from the Spenu top, though. His stats... Oh, and the juggler. Oh, I'd stay away crap. from him. Even if you think the, they're going to win. The juggler, don't even the juggler is like, he's averaging seven points a game and, and averaging 12 points a game during a win. I think you, if you pick these Spenu players, you go for the mid and AD. I'm scared of everyone else. I'm really scared of everyone else. What about on Najin's side? Like the thing is, here's one where, depending on salary, some Najin players might be worth it because who knows? Maybe it's possible you can't even get three games out of this. Well, here's a here's an interesting statistic for you. Let me just make sure this is still true. Uh, Goong actually is very high in terms of kills in the league. Um, he has 47 kills, so he's number five overall in terms of getting kills. And Goong is the highest player on Najin when he's winning to get points. He gets over 36 when he's winning. So that puts him in the top, what, seven? He's number seven overall in terms of fantasy points when winning. So Goong... Goon could actually be really good, some pretty good value this week at only 8,100. And actually, his stats are actually better when winning than OQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah he's, <laughs> when winning, Goon is the best player on Najin for points. So considering that he's very likely to win, win versus Spenu, and he gets a lot of kills. Like I said, he's number five overall in terms of total kills this season in the league. Um, I think that could be quite good. Okay, so an absolute stomp. This must be the 100% lock is SK Telecom Anarchy. Now, yeah. in this one, that, is this one where do you worry, though, that because it's a 2-0, it's not worth betting on? Do you still bet on the SK Telecom players because it's a like guaranteed points? 
I think out of we have to look the, the the thing is is that you could get guaranteed points that's true but SK SKT actually it depends on whether Faker or Easy Hoon is playing Easy Hoon actually gets more points than a win because the games tend to be longer whereas Faker is actually not doing that well he's won all his games so far I believe yeah he's won every single game he's played but he only has he's got less than 30 points Basically, so Faker's too good for fantasy. He just yeah. kills you before he gets a chance to get those huge <laughs> score lines. Okay. Whereas Easy Hoon has been playing like Vladimir, and while he only had one death last week when he played Vlad, he had he was like five one and nine. He the game was fifty five minutes long. Whereas that's Faker what, just bodied everybody as Victor and left peace. That's out. what people have to remember is unique about something like League of Legends. Like if you're in like the NFL or whatever, if you just score thirty points in the first ten minutes, they're not like game over. Yeah, the game's <laughs> over now, mate. It just ends there. Like. <laughs> League actually, that's the that's the what, that's the weird quality about how league works. That the, if you do too well, the game ends before you have a chance to do even better. Yeah, a possible. I I just Mickey does well when he's winning, but the odds of them beating SKT are just like so low. I don't know. I don't think when here's the thing, Thorin. When you when we have KT versus Ku and IM versus Spenu that are both more likely to go to three games. KT and versus then you, Ku's won, three games, one hundred percent bro. Yeah, probably. So, yeah. The two teams combined. Doesn't matter who wins that first game, it's going three. I just I just know <laughs> it in my bones. And well, I am versus that, pretty sure. I am versus Spenu could also go to three games, and because those teams are worse, they could drag it out and kill each other forever too. So my picks are mostly, especially Spenu. Remember that Spenu actually does have a fighting chance against I am, and they're playing two best of three. So you, my strategy this for days one and two. Pick some Spenu players. I think Nuclear is the player you really want to focus on. They're 80 carry. And then you try and fill it out. Like you pick both sides of IM versus, and, or you pick Spenu. You pick both sides of IM versus Spenu. And then you pick both sides of KT versus Ku, filling them out with Spenu and IM players. And you see if you can do well that way. Because KT also puts up very good fantasy points, particularly Arrow, the 80 carry. Okay, in terms of coup players, one that's a great example of what so we were talking about the KT versus coup match up there, Monty. In terms of someone to put money on, he is expensive. He's the most expensive AD carry, but Arrow has some insane stats. Yeah, exactly. The differential, I mean, especially, is very, very good. Yeah, he's he puts up nearly 40 points in a win. I do think KT is going to win this series, and because you should at least... I, I'm going to have some like extra extra cash from using Spenu players that maybe I flex Arrow here. He's expensive, but I think he's worth it. The other player that's really worth it on KT is Nagne. Um, and Nagne is not even the most expensive player. Yet Nagne puts up nearly as many points as Arrow in a win. So that's pretty good too. Okay, let me ask you this then. In terms of philosophy, if you know SKT is going to win, but someone like Nagne is not... He's only a few hundred dollars less than whoever SKT plays, but KT might go three games. Is it like obvious to you to go with the KT player in this case? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just all the all the factors add up. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the player that you may be a little bit reluctant to go on is uh, Kuro has really good stats when he's winning, but he has a his losses. He barely does anything at all. So considering he's probably gonna have two losses in this series, even though he's the highest uh, point total on Ku so far. Maybe not the best choice. Okay, so you said before, like, I am Spenu has a chance to be a shit show. Is there anyone on I am who stands out as, like, this yes. is a good a bargain here? I'm I'm glad you asked. Uh, Frozen? Actually, if I am should win that, and when Frozen wins, he gets about 32 points. So he's very cheap. Obviously, the second cheapest mid laner. So he's going to be probably pretty good value. And then surprisingly, Ignar... When Ignar wins, he gets over 30 points as a support player, which is why he's on the more expensive side. But also, Ignar is uh, number two overall in kill contribution in Korea at 82.4%. So I think Ignar is probably worth the 6,800 that you would spend on him here. He also decided at the very last minute when most people wouldn't have the balls to make a crazy shot call like this, not to join Winter Fox. So he's obviously got like some solid decision making there. <laughs> he's got the balls to do what it takes to win. You know, I respect him as my, yeah, I'm going with the Ignar as a solid, 
Solid little carved out pick for you guys there. Yeah, wisdom, the, the there. weird the weird thing about IM is actually Ignar and Apple and Frozen all have higher point averages when winning than Roar. So Roar, their AD carry, is actually probably one of the least valuable picks for this team. And so I would just statistically, I definitely take Frozen because of the salary. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, 7,500. Uh, yeah, I think that even Prey is probably better than a better pickup than him. And again, remember Nuclear, the spend AD carry because he's playing two best of threes could be very good value this week also. Yeah, the problem is 7,200. There's going to be other players you probably want to fill out from like a game that's a shit show or a, or, or a must start. Well, right. Like Nuclear Nuclear is 6,400. And then again, Arrow is one of those players. Arrow and Nagne have been doing so well. Uh, Someday is also really, really good. Any, any of the KT players, they put up points. Because when KT wins, they tend to do it with a lot of kills. So these are all really quite strong pickups that... If you can get Nuclear, the Spenu AD carry, who has just a lot of games, even if he's going to suck, he could just get a lot of points based on attrition. <laughs> I mean, the fact okay. that he enters the game lobby could mean that he gets a lot of points because he's going to be playing minimum four games, whereas all the rest of the teams are playing maximum three. Okay, so Monty, here's not only a great fantasy matchup, but also a great one on paper. CJ versus SK Telecom. Yep. And this uh, could be one where, where SKT might actually have or to go three games four, for once in a blue moon. Although they actually had to against Samsung, but well, enough about that for now. <laughs> but this must this has three games written all over it, I think. Yes. yes Stylistically, the matchup's good. So who's a steal here? Like, they, Okay, we always say the SKT mid. Like, It doesn't matter actually who it is, even though you don't know. No, no, no. Faker, Faker actually hasn't been doing too well in terms of fantasy points. Like I said, he's at like 29.5. Even but though I mean, you've got a good chance games. that they'll play Easy Hoon as well, so... It's not I so don't bad know. To down, I don't think. Um, I think you take. See the CJ uh, Coco. When we talk about Coco, he's number two behind Captain Jack. Except he's played. Well, Captain Jack's only played two games, and they were both Gen Air versus Spenu, so not a very good sample size. So Coco's the player that really does well when he wins. But when CJ loses, they tend to lose hard, and they tend to lose hard in the first game. But last week, when uh, CJ went to three games against Ku, Coco got me over a hundred points. In the three game series. So I don't know who's going to win this match either. Probably SKT, but they're really close in terms of skill. Let's find some value picks here, actually. Yeah, the problem is nearly all the SKT players are really high up. But Ambition could actually be good value here. If CJ wins, he's, he's actually, Ambition is the second highest point. Gets the second highest number of points when he's winning, and compared to anyone else on CJ behind Coco. So if CJ wins, that could be really good. Okay, here is what I sadly this is the state of Najin Monty. This is what I now consider a, a certified shit show. Is Najin versus Samsung? That has a very high chance of three games I think, of utter crap. Yes. Yeah, I think this is, could be definitely. I think this is where we. And also, up. just if you look at the and salaries, guess what? you're sticking guess what? with the ADC of Samsung to start out with. Absolutely. Fury, incredibly cheap. Fury, incredibly cheap. Samsung has actually a legitimate shot of winning that best of three. They've been playing pretty well recently. And it's all about, it's all about Fury on the Samsung roster. He gets more points than anyone else on his team. Um,. And he does better when he's losing than anyone else on his team. So considering that he's only 7,400, he's actually more expensive than he used to be, which sucks. Because <laughs> he's had too many weeks in a row where he's got points. That's the thing. This week's – the, the days three and four are very interesting because I think three of the matches, CJ versus SKT, Najin versus Samsung, and Ku versus Jin Air are all likely to go to three games. Those ones all – KT versus Anarchy should be a massive there. stomp. Okay, so in Ku Jin Air, you, Chaser. who do you actually think is going to win that match? I think Ku can uh, win this one. I think Ku can win this one too. But again, the problem is that Ku hasn't been winning too many games, so we don't really know. Kuro has been putting up the most points when they've been winning. He's actually been doing well. 
And Kuro is actually very cheap this week, so he could be some good value. Actually, he's at the bottom, even though when Kuro wins, when Kuro loses, it really drags down his point total. But he's top 10 when he wins. He's putting up over 35 points when he wins. So if you think Koo is going to win this one, that could be a good way to go. Alpha Drafts, so, been, they've been figuring out my strategies yeah, yeah. for it. Because like, Chaser is now the most expensive jungler. But if you just look, his, his differential, even when they don't win, it, the drop-off is so low. Like if if yes. you think his team, especially if you think it's his team has a chance to go to three games, that's actually like almost a lock that you have to you have to give that a try a few times. That's right. He's very consistent, and again, he has a over ninety percent kill contribution, which is number one in the league. So he's really expensive, but he's a very safe pick. Damn it! I can't believe he's so expensive. They're figuring it out. I, I'm sad. My, my secrets are no longer quite as good. <laughs> I think Fury's still a good pick this week, though. Have you cooled at all on GBM? Because he's st- he's not like the most expensive. He's like 8,700. So there's still a little gap between Coco and Faker or Easy Hoon and him. His stats aren't like the best, but they're still pretty good. How do you, how do you feel about a pick like him? I mean, the problem is that the stats on the win aren't as crazy as some of the other ones out there. Yeah, he's he's the GBM's getting thirty three points on a win, which is. I think the okay. value might not quite be there on that one. It feels like a little bit over. It also so. it also depends on whether they play Kuzan or not, right? That's true. There's also some substitution. Kuzan is on. is Kuzan's won all his games so far, but Kuzan hasn't had a very good point total. Only twenty six, and he's won all his games, so there's a bit of a risk there. Uh, Pilot, again, is expensive, but Pilot is really, really consistent. Pilot's like the double lift of Korea in terms of fantasy points. He gets, he tends to put up good numbers, be very high up there, but also just have very little variation, win or loss. Okay, so the last game is KT versus Anarchy. Now, Anarchy, earlier on in the season, okay, maybe they've, I mean, they've won more, because for a team that's lost three out of the four games they won a lot of actual games within that like single games but this are they going to get to three KT and SKT no, no so it's not, not going to happen so then just don't, don't go on so. any of those players I just I think it, this is a week you don't pick Anarchy some weeks when Mickey wins remember when Mickey wins he has 37 points a game he's like number five overall when winning but against KT and SKT you can't expect him to even win one game that's not a realistic I think prediction so I think you stay away from Anarchy overall this week. I, I, I have a I, 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 I have good, I have good feelings players. about Najin versus Samsung this week. Remember too that Goong is actually very good value because Goong is really high up there when he wins, and he, so I think Najin will take the Najin and Samsung should go to three games, and I think Goong is actually pretty low for a mid laner. He's only eighty one hundred, so Even that could though- be good value. Even though KT feels like a lock to win that, I'd also suggest not betting on their players because Arrow is still super expensive. And in general, yeah. I mean, there's other games that you know are going to be three games and that there's other players that are actually even better than some of the, like the mid, et cetera, who... So I'd just well, stay away from KT even on that one. Staying away from KT Anarchy is pretty simple because every other match is much more likely to go to three games. I actually think this is one where on day two here, I'm going to enter tons of teams, dude, because just all, all these first three games just look so so tantalizing. Yeah. I want to so, see. One, I, one other thing that I want to bring up is that Crown is very cheap, and when Crown wins, he's not great in terms of points. He's pretty middle of the standings, but he's also really cheap. So a gamble fill-out pick there. From maybe a gamble fill-out pick. Uh, and Najin, like I said, Goong is, is, could be surprisingly high value. Because okay. if he wins, he does. Re- Goong does really, really well. He's the top Najin player when winning. Okay, I think that's it then, Monty. I think now we go into the well-executed closeout section of the show where, again, I don't have any tag. No one gives me taglines, guys. So what I'm going to say is, if you like to play Fantasy League of Legends, I'd say maybe give it a try on Alpha Draft. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>